Good morning. This is Vince Lancey. It is 8.03 on November 1st after a harrowing month for equity longs uh, and most currency pairs uh, against the dollar. Uh, gold uh, had a choppy month, uh, ended uh, weaker after having the last third of the month be stronger. Uh, I'm going to refer you to uh, the opportunistic trader for under the insights, all right? The most recent post at the top of the insights is, you would just go here, go to insights, click on it twice, and you go to the post. And I say, I want, to have, I want you to have the post open, please. We're gonna go through this. This is, our going, this is gonna be our daily routine now with some changes. Uh, next week will be off the phone and on a computer that's uh, not air gapped, but uh, segregated from trading. All right, this post uh, is here, and I want you to refer to it for links that I ask you to click. Uh, you'll notice there are no charts in this post. I will be putting updated charts in. Charts that I have right now are as of 7 to 7.30. So for going through this, you can look at my screen instead of the email for the moment. All right. Gold fix for 11 1 2018. Gold is stronger on the back of US dollar weakness and yuan strength. There you see the dollar is weaker. This was at about 7 a.m., 6.45 a.m. Gold is stronger. You'll see that silver is stronger and palladium uh, slightly stronger. Platinum and copper are stronger. This is not just a comment on the dollar being weaker uh, based on performance. It's a comment on the, do the dollar yuan being weaker or uh, China has uh, changed policy uh, on uh, the yuan. And uh, we will pat ourselves on the back on that in a minute. Going through individual U.S. Pair pairs, uh, you see the offshore yuan, which is also known as the renminbi or the Hong Kong dollar, which is traded, you know, offshore, uh, 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 is trading six nine four five, uh, taking its cue from uh, the CNY, which is the one that is fixed or pegged on a daily basis. They pegged it higher this morning. Dollar yen, pretty much uh, nowhere. Euro is stronger against the dollar. That may be a dead cap bounce. We're not sure. British pound is stronger. There's some relief out of uh, Europe. Uh, 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 Canadian dollar, a little lower. Aussie dollar stronger. It's a commodity currency. Uh, Russia flat to lower. And uh, the peso representing Latin America is lower. Okay. FX drivers. We had noted that 18-month gold one peg here. Um, we, uh, we have noted that the 18 month gold one peg here was important. We also stated in yesterday's gold fix that it was likely China would reconsider its weak yuan policy as it had done little to offset the U.S. tariffs effect. There were signs both overt and implied they would be moving toward lowering taxes and issuing yuan based bonds. Uh, I am reading this post out loud, yes, but I also have comments to make along the way that will not be in the post. This data for listeners only. These fiscal measures would, in QE fashion, necessitate supporting the yuan. So, if they're going to be lowering taxes and they're going to be selling bonds to the market, uh, uh, they're going to be not weakening the yuan. It's a QE concept. China corporations have a lot of debt. Little background. And before the trade war started, there were there there they were on a mission to force deleveraging. I'm talking about five months ago. Uh, these recent developments say to this author, myself, that tactics for dealing with trade wars would change. Uh, how much we didn't know and to hazard guess involving China's ham-fisted bipolar policy decisions would be an error. Okay. Comment that will not show up in the post only because you took the time to listen. So I'm going to give you something uh, worth your while. China is culturally great at emulating and duplicating. You can feel free to insert a joke about, you know, genes and, and DVDs uh, over the years. But the reality of it is China is a good learner of lessons that other people do. And that's not just me talking. That's also uh, uh, a, a UConn professor that I work with and have published papers with uh, who has done work in China. And uh, I will paraphrase, I will quote him without saying his name. Uh, 
they're great at copying what we do. They're not innovative. And I, you know, asked him, what do you mean by that? And he said, well, if you compare the Chinese culture to the Japanese culture, they're not big risk takers. Uh, uh, they think in longer terms than we do. And uh, because of that, they're reticent to innovate. Uh, they're more comfortable uh, as a government-minded society uh, to follow innovations uh, even further behind normal uh, uh, countries. In general, governments react to uh, uh, capitalistic innovations. Uh, China is even further back in the reaction curve. As opposed to Japan, he educated me, which was and is a forefront of, uh, at the forefront of innovation, not copying, you know, uh, 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 just in time, uh, supply chain managing, Sorry, iced coffee, et cetera. So, so what you will see out of China is they copy, and they're copying us again. This is now opinion. They are saying, as I said yesterday, that weakening of the yuan is really not doing much because it's not a big portion of the products that we create. So we're not going to weaken it. And I didn't expect it would happen the next day. You know, I'd love to say I'm great for predicting that. Uh, uh, but I probably have my phone tapped by some Chinese person, some spy, um, government, Chinese government spy. Let's put it that way. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, it's lucky. The timing is lucky, fortuitous. Uh, so keep that in mind that, uh, uh, China could change their mind again in a month. And, and I said, because they really don't know what they're doing. They're just copying. Uh, you know, copying words without understanding meaning or context are important, but they do think in longer terms so they can afford to make those kind of mistakes. What does this mean for gold? Well, we said that uh, uh, we showed in previous charts that gold and the yuan were pegged, uh, uh, or China was attempting to peg it uh, to satisfy the people it buys oil from. But uh, you'll see in this chart for Tuesday and Wednesday, Monday was worse. Gold had just started to descend uh, uh, towards the yuan. Now, I'm not saying that the red line and the candlestick chart have to converge. Uh, what I am saying is that the slopes should be the same. Uh, depends on where you your point of origin is. Uh, you know, and, and the point of origins vary. If you go back six months, a year, if you're looking at a daily chart, uh, I'm not saying that the red line and the candlestick have to meet. I am saying uh, that the slope should be the same. So uh, today, this morning, drawn at probably 645, uh, the yuan starts doing its own part. I said that gold, we believed in the Sunday report, we said gold would either drop or the yuan would rally or both. We actually said it more concisely by just simply saying we believe a regression to the mean is going to happen. You know, I put slope, not price there, and you saw that explanation. All right. Put a fork in yuan weakness. Note we warned that Chinese policy, that because Chinese policy of weaker yuan, have been, okay, I said this already, all right? Um, uh, I want to uh, make a comment on avoiding spurious correlations when trading gold. If you're looking to start trading this correlation on a 15-minute basis, that's not advised. Uh, uh, you, you, could, you could do that, but we haven't done the work to see if that's something to trade. Uh, uh, I'm closer to trading a correlation between silver, gold, and copper uh, in, in, in a, in a, in a tri-arbitrage than I am uh, doing this. And I say that because uh, the offshore uh, yuan, uh, which is the market's opinion of what China is going to do, uh, can really be wrong. We're talking about digital uh, events. Every day, China does something. Okay, outside markets, observations, and events, uh, there's nothing under that. And really, that's basically because you know what's going on. And if you don't, I'm going to tell you uh, on the equity side, uh, the global indices and commodities uh, show that the NASDAQ, uh, the S&P, and the, uh, the Dow are all up uh, anywhere from uh, the NASDAQ is up uh, about 38 handles. Uh, the S&P looks like it's B or in the ES future, we'll call it that, 16 handles or 16 points, people call it these days. Uh, and the Dow is looking to come in up uh, 
only half a percent, 144 points. So uh, yesterday's uh, rally may be continuing. Uh, as we look at other countries' equity markets uh, uh, as outside drivers, uh, they do have relationships to gold. Uh, in, in, in the Far East, the Nikkei was off uh, a little bit. Uh, Shanghai Composite mixed. And uh, as you go into Europe, uh, uh, the DAX is about a half percent higher, and the stocks 500 is uh, about a half percent higher. So no big variation between Germany, uh, the anchor or or uh, the anchor tenant of the EU, uh, and the broader market of Europe in general. Uh, and the FTSE is flat uh, essentially. So those are your outside markets. You've seen the the uh, the uh, 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 charts. Um, uh, above on the yuan uh, observations uh, my observations are quickly uh, midterms are still underlying drivers and I had said uh, in the in the multiple variable aspect in the Sunday uh, uh, article entitled um, uh, I don't know it might have been just entitled we've oh it's kiss twelve thirty five goodbye uh, and, and, and we'll pat ourselves on the back for that in a second. But uh, midterms matter. You may see that reassert itself. Uh, and certainly, uh, if the dollar comes off, uh, uh, that will uh, give impetus for shorts to rally and any people who were thinking about buying gold uh, uh, to rally. And the dollar is very important for all commodities right now. Uh, uh, outside markets, I want to talk about oil for a second. People have been asking why oil is so weak, and uh, uh, there are two reasons for that, in my opinion, and that's a 30-year experience in trading these markets and constantly looking for correlations and arbitrage opportunities. Uh, lacking any strong seasonal uh, drive for oil and lacking uh, any uh, fundamental demand, oil is driven by two things. The price of the dollar, and I'm not ranking these as one is one point or the other. The price of the dollar is a default driver for oil when oil's own particular fundamentals are not dominant. The second thing, and this is very important, the flows of money managers. Money managers who are risk on are buying stocks and they're buying oil. Right now, we're seeing money managers sell stocks and or sell oil. If I'm long stocks in a core portfolio, and I'm a macro global manager, macro global equity manager, and I'm also long oil, oil is a smaller market than the global stock market. I mean, oil is a huge market. It's basically the biggest industrial commodity, uh, industrial consumed commodity, uh, uh, possibly with the exception of steel. Rolled steel may be bigger, but hey, uh, uh, we trade oil. So uh, my point here is that if you're a fund manager, and I know this because I've spoken with them over the years and yesterday, you're going to liquidate the punts or smaller positions you have in order to uh, uh, shore up uh, your equity positions. You need to have cash on hand. The end of the month is coming. There may be some redemptions. And you know, you're long Apple, which is up 50%. And as a fund manager, you're very momentum oriented. You're not going to sell something that uh, has a long term momentum higher and is making you money and is what your clients demand. You are going to sell that which is profitable and or a loser at the margin and is a much smaller percentage of your portfolio. When you add to that that there are momentum funds that just trade commodities uh, like C and like CTAs and algorithms, you're going to see a sell-off in oil exacerbated by a stock market. Oil is a risk-on tool, period. That's it. So that's why you'll see oil rally as the dollar rallies, because oil is taking its cues from stocks uh, or fundamentals or seasonality. But just assuming fundamentals and seasonality don't matter, it has, or geopolitics, of course, right? Oil is such a great product to trade because of these things. It reacts to information as opposed to gold, which we have to wait six months for uh, uh, information to bear fruit. So again, oil has reluctantly joined 
every other industrial commodity that had been selling off on the back of a strong dollar. Copper, platinum, palladium, silver, uh, uh, steel, iron have all been crushed because the dollar was stronger. Uh, I'm not going to bring it back to China, but that's, you know, they're buying less. Strong dollar means things denominated in dollars get weaker in price. Events. Be on the lookout for events. Obviously, the big number uh, for this week will be uh, the jobs number on Friday. Uh, I'm going to go on the record verbally. I'll put it in writing. I actually did put it in writing and timestamped it and sent it to a macro fund manager friend of mine who may be listening uh, anonymously. Uh, I said, and I'm going to go on the record and say this. I think that the stock market is going to sell off. Uh, uh, I'm not going to offer times uh, because I'll let my system tell me times. I think we're going to have a move to 2600 or 2630 um, that this sell off is not done yet. I'm not married to the idea, but the macro ideas I do believe are going to happen. God bless me. Um, the stock market is going to sell off to 2600. Then it's going to rally again. Uh, and then I think the bigger moves next year, possibly in the next six months, are going to be a complete washout in stocks which will force the Fed to seriously reconsider uh, 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 the PAL uh, uh, sensible uh, rate hikes. And what was a global problem sans U.S., meaning the trade wars have hurt everyone else before they've hurt the United States, will start to affect us. Stocks will plummet. I don't know, 2,200 possibly in the S&P. Um, but when the PAL put kicks in, which will be 10, 15, 20% lower from here, I think you're going to see uh, a stoppage, a hard stop of QT. You're going to see uh, uh, the dollar drainage from quantitative tightening uh, 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 really start to come home to roost, and you're going to see the Fed have to react. And that means debasing the dollar. At that point, you're going to see gold rally hard with stocks and bonds as the dollar goes down precipitously. That's my opinion. It's aggressive. From there, <laughs> when after the Fed eases, you're going to see you know a super spike, probably the last spike in bonds. It's 821. Uh, gold will rally, but it will lag as usual. It's only when the stock market comes off again. So bear in mind, I'm looking at it like this. Stocks down to 2,600. On a low, medium, high uh, comment, I'd say I'll give that a low to medium opinion in the next three months. Stocks uh, back up to 27, 2800, low, medium, because then 26, then it goes to 28, and then stocks washing out, I think, to 2200 over the next six months. That's a medium to medium high uh, because I think the strong dollar policy is not sustainable. It will come home to roost. If you keep draining dollars from the world supply, they ain't going to have any dollars to buy stocks anymore, our stocks. Uh, Swiss National Bank will be not able to buy dollars and therefore not buy stocks. I think the stock market, medium to high conviction on this, uh, will take a serious dive, uh, uh, increasing the likelihood of a pal put, which would then make stocks scream higher as they begin to discount true 1970s-like inflation. Then you will see gold as the last thing to truly rally after food, after stocks, will come gold. So I'm looking for six months to a year out, uh, a big swing lower, followed by a pronounced swing higher on a weaker dollar. And then stocks just saying, okay, inflation is outpacing us. Uh, the Fed's not going to be able to tighten. And then stocks died. A little convoluted, but basically lower short term. There's a trade coming, and then I think the macro play is uh, much lower, a major reversal in policy from strong dollar to weak dollar, much higher with gold coming along with it, and then gold keeps its, uh, keeps its gains while stocks languish and we go into a bear market. Okay, technical numbers, enough of that. Day 23. These are uh, Michael Moore's analytics. Uh, I sh you should know that I have no financial range with him. Michael is, I would say, a mensch. Michael is a really good guy. For those of you who are not familiar with that term, Michael is a true gentleman. 
Um, uh, he uh, charges $5,000 a month for his energy and gold analysis. And uh, because of our longstanding business relationship, he allows me to publish a piece of it. Uh, I give him the, cre the credit that he deserves. Uh, I don't think you're going to be subscribing to it at $5,000 a month unless you are a macro hedge funds, uh, hint. Uh, uh, but I am not paid for that. My pay is uh, 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 the goodwill and good faith created from the relationship. He's a good guy. He knows what he's talking about. All right. Uh, I'm not going to actually get into the verbal context for numbers because we're running tight. But basically, he is um, friendly to the market uh, above 1243, uh, and he's neutral to friendly to the market today with fears of some downside moves. I want to get into the VBS very quickly. All right. The thing that called the market move uh, of $20 from Sunday to today, why don't we just give you a quick synopsis? You can read that above there. That's not a disclaimer. That's an explanation. Low, medium, high rankings. 240 minute. Our work is done here. Okay. The VBS signal from Sunday is done after $20 drop on a trigger. It needs to inhale again. Moving on. Daily. No apparent help. 60 minutes. Suggest a pullback for one to three hours when I did this. And it gave a stop of uh, uh, being short. Uh, between 1225 and 1220 with a stop loss of 1225 print and a target of one. Okay. Well, guess what? The point is moot. Uh, gold is now rallying. Uh, wait, or is that stocks? Oh boy. Well, stocks are up then maybe, maybe gold is up too. That would be kind of cool. Don't you think? Um, gold, let's see what gold is doing right now. And the current price in gold is 1230. So it's totally blown away. Uh, that short term move. Okay. Um, this is a macro tool. Uh, you can read that on your own, uh, but we want to make a comment. Uh, I had a shout out to Larry Benedict for helping me develop this. Okay. VBS is a momentum algo well, on consult with Larry Benedict, market wizard and op trader founder and advisor to me. Uh, we are now testing a regression to the mean version by we, I mean, I'm bearing the brunt of the testing. Larry's just advising me on tweaks and uh, 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 correlating with his own trading style, uh, which is simply a negation of trend. Uh, the RTM version, regression to the mean version, would be a negation of trend uh, with early success. When I give signals using that version of the model, they will almost always be low confidence. We've got a lot of work to do there. Gotcha. Okay. We're going to close out here. All right. This is what you don't know. All right. The track record for, this is for active traders. All right. So a little bit of macro. Uh, a little bit of technical analysis for October. The VBS system using using it in gold and a couple other markets is eight wins and four losses. Uh, 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 and since August, when we started doing this with our trader, it's 17 and 13. What matters and what you do not see, and a logical question for anyone who's an active trader is, great, you've got more wins and losses. How much did you win when you win? How much did you lose when you lose? For me, that's easy to say. I lose one. When I lose, I make two when I win. Uh, the next variable is, well, what about your contracting size? How big are your contracts? How big are your positions? You would have to be a subscriber to get a feel for that. Uh, that is risk management based. The point is you decide your own contracts. We give the signals. And as Bryn Kelly likes to say, we give the facts. And in this case, signals, you decide what you want to do. Maybe you want to fade the levels. Closing comments, guests coming, tech upgrades. We'll get off this phone. Marketing and self-promotion thoughts, an offer to Goldfix listeners. We're getting off in one minute, so I'm going to say this very quickly. Anyone who's listening right now, you bring five listeners to the Goldfix, and I will personally finance your first month as a subscriber. And then from there, you decide if you want uh, to stay on as a subscriber. We want to grow this show in listeners because it's fun. Because when we get enough people and we hit critical mass, we're going to open it up to chats and we're going to have after the close webinars. Uh, these are things that we all want to do with the Opportunistic Trader to offer all levels of education as well as fun. Because let's face it, gold isn't that exciting on a minute by minute basis. 828, finally, go to the website. Go to the store on the website. I'm asking you right now to do that. And at the bottom, it says, sign up. Read that. Sign up for the newsletter.
because paywalls are coming all over the world. We don't have ads on the site. I'm not going to open a Patreon site. I'm not asking for handouts. Just sign up for the newsletter. That's all. And see what you've been missing because I'm going to start removing levels from public face and give them to subscribers and or newsletter subscribers only. That's it. Uh, 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 we're not blocking everyone out. We're trying to build a community of like-minded individuals. Again, you get five people on I will sponsor your first month and you can decide for yourself how the opportunistic trader works as a subscription.